Hey, what's up? So usually I'm doing these video interviews from like people in Europe and whatever, but today I'm actually in New York and I'm here with Luke Pinella and we are going to talk about padding. Now this thing right here has probably how many pads on it? Well, a normal suit has 17 pads. 17? So this one probably has, I don't know, 25? Yeah, 25 or so because it's a Kingma. So you always wonder like what makes a flute great. I mean, if you have a professional flute and it's padded terribly, it's going to sound terribly. And if you have a student flute that's padded very well, it'll sound a lot better than that professional flute. So we're going to talk about what goes inside of the pad today. And Luke has a ton of examples that he's going to show us. So why don't you start and just show okay. us some of maybe the base of like what's underneath all that? Sure, sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different types of pads on the market. You know, there's people here, buzzwords, usually a lot, I, a lot of my clients, when I say, do you know the difference between a Stradlinger pad or a felt pad, <clears throat> they generally don't really know what the difference is. Um, or a gold pad. So essentially what I have here is um, a bunch of different examples of pads that are used. Um, what I have is I have uh, synthetic pads. Um, which is made out of a kind of a rubber. This is a McKenna pad. Um, Valentino pads, which is a similar situation. It's kind of more of a foam-like pad. I have leather pads. Here's a leather pad. I cut some of these pads in half, too, to give a, uh, a, a better description. Yeah. Felt pad, which is the most kind of most commonly used pads throughout this, the age of the modern flute. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Straubinger pad right here. This is you know, not really... Yeah. Put that up a little more. Let me see kinda... Yeah, I mean, that one's it's cut in half. You can kind of mm -hmm. see. That's what this is. This has on it, I know. This has strong yeah, pads. Yeah. And then there's other pads that I don't have examples of right now. There's cork pads. There's uh, Jim Smith gold pads. Um, what other pads are there? There's pads for days. <laughs> so, the, the, um, so a quick synopsis on, on what the differences are. Um, a Straubinger pad, <clears throat> he had kind of the market, um, he had a trademark on this pad, so for a mm -hmm. long time it was just Straubinger pads. So now, yeah. when we say like Kleenex or something like that, David uh, has, has cornered the market on that. Ah, okay. So, um, but there's also great contemporary style pads available now. Mm -hmm. And we use, you know, I use Straubinger pads, I use Pisoni pads that are the same concept. So what a Straubinger pad is, is it has a Delron plastic base yeah. and a microfiber over the Delron plastic base. You can see that. Wow. Yeah, it's so, so tiny. Yeah. So what that does is they, they put a plastic base and they put microfiber okay. and then that's wrapped with a, a fish skin. I have some here. Ew. Can I touch it? Yeah, yeah. Whoa, this is real thin. Yeah, that's like a, a thousandth of an inch. Um, and most pads are covered with this bladder. It's mm -hmm. it's really essentially it is a bladder. It's a pig's bladder. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Great. That's what you have on your all this modern technology. That's all right. this money spent. Pig's and bladder. We're still using that. Yeah. <laughs> so so a, a Straubinger pad has a microfiber base mm -hmm. down on, so it's hard. Yeah. You can't. You, as you can see here, you can kind of. Feel how firm that is. Yeah, I mean that that ain't going anywhere. That's not that going is... anywhere. So the uh, the concept with strawberry pads mm -hmm. and contemporary style pads is yeah. that the Delron base and the microfiber are very yeah, consistent. Yeah, yeah. They're flat and they last a long time. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that will come upon when I'm thinking about what I put in a flute is the the type of flute it is, how durable the pads are, which mm -hmm. what we want to use how engineered the flute is, how old the flute is. Mm -hmm. If the player is a, plays dark or plays bright, mm -hmm. these are all kind of things that we approach with these pet, different style of pads. Interesting. So a, so a quick synopsis of that. Mm -hmm. Straubinger is microfiber okay. with a Delron base. Okay. Very flat, with a bladder skin. Now this is a felt pad. All right. See that? You can kind of yeah. move that. I don't want to like break That's it. That's okay. okay. I have a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, this yeah. is this is a kind of a traditional felt pad, and this is this kind of pads that they've been using. I mean, if you bought a Louis Lot in eighteen seventy, mm -hmm. you would have 
so, this kind of pad. Yeah. And essentially what this is is a piece of wool um, with just a bladder and a cardboard bottom. Yeah, I can, I can see, see that? that. Yeah. So, is that covered in the bladder as well? This or also has okay. the same kind of bladder. So you can see that that's bigger. It's, it's more puffy than the Strawbinger pad. Mm -hmm. See that? Oh, yeah. So the, you know, the pros and the cons of a felt pad, <clears throat> um, the felt pad's a little darker. Mm -hmm. And it also has a little bit of a warmer sound. Mm -hmm. um, some traditionalists um, are very, they just want felt pads. Gary yeah. Shocker just wants felt pads. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Keith Underwood loves felt pads. And obviously, these guys are masters, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But everybody has their own different thing. They, those guys also really enjoy playing old vintage flutes. Mm -hmm. So if I see a flute that's old, like a very old flute, a lot of times I'll put a felt pad in. It's a little more forgiving. Mm -hmm. um, with Strominger pads, now all the companies use, you know, they spend millions of dollars to get everything really flat, mm -hmm. get the cup flat, get the tone hole flat. And if you have a really highly engineered flute like Liv's flute, yeah, yeah, like Liv's. or like a Brandon Brothers or Burkhart, I mean, there's many really top-notch. So basically, when I look at the flute first, mm -hmm. we'll put a slick under the tone hole without a pad in it. And okay. we want it to be about 15 thousandths front to back, side to side. Everything is flat. Thousands? You know? Thousands. <laughs> thousands of an inch is what, what we deal with. I mean, a half a thousandths of an inch will change the way the flute plays. A piece of your hair wow. um, is three thousandths of an inch. Oh, no. So, I can't even color in between the lines. So yeah, I don't well, know how that works. There you have it. I mean, <laughs> a half a thousand <laughs> on your B flat yeah. will change the way the flute plays. So, like you said in the beginning, you could have, um, you know, you could have a live, or not, Liv's flutes are really well padded. Yeah, this is really well padded, David, two months old. Yeah, not going David Houston padded, but he's a serious. <laughs> But the, um, you could have a, whatever, a gold brand in a, uh, yeah. a sixty seven thousand dollars flute, yeah. and if the padding's not happening, mm -hmm. you could have a Gemeinhart that's padded by Luke Pinella, and, the, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it'll play amazing. I mean, the scale and everything's going to be yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. But the, the actual covering, and, and it's hard to pat. I mean, it takes years and years to get that really, oh, yeah. you know, that uh, skill honed. That's crazy. And it's crazy. So, so the, um, let's keep going here. So that's the, um, yeah, he's got like 30, I got a lot of, so that's the felt pad. That's the traditional okay. pad. And the downfall, when we're talking about the pros and the cons, I would say one of the pros is it's a darker sound. Excuse my phone. It's a darker sound. Okay. And it's, um, you know, it has a little more of that traditional, it's a little, it doesn't feel quite as strong, poppy under your fingers. You yeah. Know? But it has a beautiful uh, every note has a story. That's really mm -hmm. what I think felt pad pads kind of excel is when it comes oh, yeah. to the tone. You know, stuff like Baroque music, you think about it, how your fingers are the pads themselves. You've got that softness of the sound. But then when I'm doing something like totally contemporary, you know, and it's just so loud. It's there. It's yeah, like yeah. right there. The key, key taps are uh, Strawbinger. Mm -hmm. That would be my... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, um, you know, the disadvantage to felt padding is I don't think it's quite as stable. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times um, you hear uh, technicians talking about things settling or, or getting better. I never yeah. think, I never, if you go to a technician and they say it's going to get better, run away from them. Because it, <laughs> it should be 100% from, the, from when you leave the shop. But... Felt pads do tend to set a little more. They're, they tend to um, take on moisture mm -hmm. and expand and contract and heat and humidity. Yeah. Which is which the the Strawbinger pads having the plastic base and the microfiber mm -hmm. are much less prone to moving due to temperature or oh, yeah. heat and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So moving onward, um, I have a Valentino. They call these greenbacks. These. Um, that is a, a, one of my clients, Sue Ann Khan, calls these super pads. Okay, okay. See that? It's kind yeah. of a foam. And yeah. the, these are beautiful pads for covering. They cover great, and they seem to hold uh, a seal for a long time. I like these. These are cool. The only problem when we talk about advantages and dis disadvantages yeah. is 
They tend to be a little sticky sometimes. Uh, they take on, they kind of take on this, this sugar and all the stuff that goes into your horn and they kind of gets tacky. Uh, so what I'll do with those pads sometimes on, you know, on certain flutes, you have, uh, if the flute's not like really beautiful, I mean, many flutes are beautiful, but they yeah. get screwed up through time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I have a, you know, if I have a, a cup that's been hit or warped, and it's not covering quite as well, a C-sharp trill key, or a yeah. G-sharp, a D-sharp, mm -hmm. I'll put those super pads in, or Valentinos, or whatever you want to call them, and they kind of tend to really just stay, stay in adjustment, mm -hmm. but they get a little tacky. And they, they don't, they might not project quite as well as a, and they also, as a strawberry pad yeah, or something. Yeah. They also do not have a, um, a bladder or a felt covering, mm -hmm. okay? So the next pad I can show you, this is a McKenna pad, okay. and this is essentially the same concept as a Valentino, whereas it's just one material. That feels like rubber. Yeah, that's yeah. a rubber kind oh, of. Oh, it really is. Same okay. thing. So this, another one of these uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages of this pad, I think when these rubbery McKenna pads cover like gangbusters, like mm -hmm. like maybe better than anything. Okay. Um, we put them on a, on our alto flutes sometimes. Makes some of those sense. bigger, yeah, yeah, and they just grab like crazy. But the same thing with these, I found they get a little tacky over mm -hmm. time. If you take a rubber band and you hold the rubber band uh, for a few years, you'll start to see that the rubber band starts to deteriorate a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I think it's the same concept. Sure. Okay. So, let's see what else I have. Also, I was have an example here. There's two different types of felt pa pads here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One is a puffier pad and one's a compressed pad. They actually call them um, woven felt and pressed felt. Okay. So, so see that? How that's, that's the pressed one. That's pressed. Yeah, that's like way harder. And then that this one's is woven. much so And it's wo like I can see little Yeah, wo woven wovenness yeah. in there. And these thicker pads generally are on my hearts and in student line flutes because okay. they're not really spending hours and hours going in under half a thousand inch. They're kind of just clamping them oh, yeah. and sending them off. But, I was also terrible to my flute in sixth grade. My well, that's, beautiful little guy heart, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. it, it sat on the lip of my music stand and band. That's it true. Dropped a few times, yeah. It's funny too because you know, I mean, I'm sure that's a major reason. We have kids with flutes; mm -hmm. they're whack it, drop them into bags. I see so many flutes just destroyed coming <laughs> through here, but um, that's definitely an advantage of Probably. those those puffier, pillowier pads. Mm -hmm. And so another thing that's kind of interesting that happens sometimes, just going from a student flute to a professional flute, mm -hmm. is like I'll have someone who has a Gemeinhart, I mean, not to put down Gemeinhart, yeah. or any of these, these yeah. pre-professional flutes yeah. that are costing thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, you know, they'll say, I've played this flute for so many years, and the mechanism's never done anything. I bought this brand new Boston flute, and the mechanism seized up on me. What's wrong? Why is this flute doing that? And the reason that is, kind of get a little bit away from the padding yeah. side, is that the, the mechanism on your flute and yeah. on Boston flutes are so, what's called true. Everything's so tight and perfect. Yeah, definitely. Um, that when you introduce a little sweater or something into that mechanism, sometimes it'll seize up. So oh, that's no. just a little side note yeah. there. Um, so let's see, what else do I have here? Also, when I showed Rachel in the beginning that this fish skin here, or they call it, it's a bladder. Um, what some people do with a strawberry pad is they'll reskin the pad. So if the pad rips, instead of replacing the pad, you just put the skin on, you, you rewrap the pad. But I don't love to see that. Mm -hmm. Some people do that like exclusively. And I think that the microfiber over six to eight years starts to break down and wear down. Yeah, bit. I can definitely see that. How long will the bladder last usually? Depends. Usually people go through two, two, one to two pads a year. Okay. But it, it really depends on your acid, acidity level. Okay. You know, so I have certain clients that come in and they'll, I have one client that goes through six to seven pads a year, which is a lot of pads. Yeah. Um, those are, that, that's a reason when we talk about which pads to choose for someone, yeah. that would be a reason to get maybe a synthetic, like a, a uh, McKenna pad yeah. or something that's a synthetic pad or a gold pad because um, they will never rip. Oh, yeah. You know? 
but they can get sticky. It's the whole, that whole same thing. Another um, pad that I do not have an example of here, just because I don't keep them in stock because they're kind of pricey, mm -hmm. is the JS um, Gold Pads. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of pad jobs with these Gold Pads, and um, they're wonderful too. The, um, Jim Schmidt makes them. They're super engineered, like mm -hmm. really, he's a genius. They're beautiful. It's kind of a gold leaf. He makes one of a black gold pure gold wow. and he makes a palladium one he just stopped making the palladium one Gosh. and um i've done them for people like robert dick has them in his flute mm -hmm. and um i have a lot of clients that you know especially a guy like robert who's yeah. doing the key slaps and yeah. stuff like that you know they're very durable and they hold up for a long time what are they putting that on so they're just putting that on like a they actually put it on a probably an aluminum base okay but it's essentially it's exactly the same concept as um as a straw okay. so it's a it's a an aluminum base um with uh they put these stabilizers on the bottom of the cup too i have some examples of stabilizers so um that goes glues on the bottom for yeah. these separated pads because they're so thin yeah. And um, so it's the same concept as a strawberry pad, only it's it's wrapped in this gold plated material that lasts for for a very long time. And they're very good. They have a kind of a gold, a tonal sound to them. Um, that's another one that there's advantages and disadvantages to though. If someone came to me with a with a Brandon Brothers or a Levin flute or even I did one on a Burkhart that came out very nice. These flutes that are really highly engineered flutes, I think that's the best scenario for these highly engineered pads. Mm -hmm. um, I did one on a, uh, you know, I've done them on vintage flutes too, and they, you know, vintage Powells, and uh, some of these flutes are really great. Even mm -hmm. like Vern Powell, I did a repad on, um, I think it was like, no, I did one on a three digit with Straubinger that came out beautifully. Wow. Yeah. And I did one, uh, t uh, 10, uh, uh, you know, it was, I think a, 1920 or something. I put gold pads in that and it came out great. So certain instruments are just such, such a high level anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's see. What else do I have? I have another example of a... Uh, this is out of a Zentner Piccolo. Yeah, it's tiny. And that is a cork pad with um, a bladder over it and also some like kind of a paper, synthetic mm -hmm. paper. And I like these pads a lot. These are great too. The um, They're very flat, even. Um, another way to go about padding is using cork pads. Yeah. Um, uh, Jim Keefe used to do that mm -hmm. at, at Brandon Brothers. I've seen some Brandon Piccolos with with gold pads that are amazing. I'm mean, not gold pads. I'm sorry, cork pads that are unbelievable. I too. played at Keefe at an FA last year. It was great. Yeah, yeah, there's great Piccolos. Um, and there's a couple different ways of, of putting those in. Some guys yeah. use sand them actually to make them into the, the wow. shape. They put them in and sand yeah. under the tall. I don't do that, but um, I do put uh, cork pads and piccolos a lot in the trill key, the water keys. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for a couple companies in, in Boston and they would have us do that. So we do that a lot of times. So G sharp, the trill keys, you know, so. I got a question about sure. that. So I have soldered tone holes on this. What's the difference between soldered and drawn in regards to pads? I mean, these are sharp, these soldered sure, tone sure. holes. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, that's a good question. You know, generally soldered tone holes are going to be a little bit more accurate because soldered tone holes are literally chimneys soldered onto each onto the tube. So they take, yeah. and a drawn tone hole, they extrude the metal from the tube and then they okay. roll it over. So there's more... Um, what's the word? There, there's there's more room for error on a drawn tone hole flute. Yeah. For so for you know Straubinger pads and Schmidt pads and stuff. There's maybe a little little less accuracy, but for the most part, you can just they're pretty interchangeable. Oh, that's nice. Um, a lot of guys too. I see you know on Facebook and all these repair guys want to. Uh, file tone holes all the time, and I'm I'm very against filing tone yeah. holes. Um, I, like I said, I work for some of the companies, and generally a high-end Boston flute or a Japanese flute is going to come with the tone holes being pretty flat already. Mm -hmm. So guys, and, and in New York, a lot of these my clients they would they would uh, have a cow if I was I was mm -hmm. you know. So that's that's one of the things that I see going around that I don't think is very. Mm -hmm. 
happening. I kind of agree with that one. I mean, you can change the pads over and over and over again, but to change the body of the flues, exactly. I mean, that's, that's scary territory. It is scary territory, and that's why it's important to have a technician who who's really knows what they're doing. Yeah. Another thing I do here um, that a lot of companies don't do is if I'm fitting a head joint, I'll, I'll just put these, these are in half a thousandth of an inch. Okay. So I'll put these over the tube okay. instead of sanding. So yeah. people sand tenants. I oh, see okay. old pals and Haynes with the tenants as low as like six thousandths, like really, you know, yeah. or six millimeters. Mm -hmm. But the, um, you know, taking material off is never a good, <laughs> never a good situation. Mm -hmm. Um, also, some of the other things that we do with padding, um, I see some flutes with paper shims as opposed to Delron plastic shims. Um, I think that if you can, you know, if you can, you're having a, a, a repad or an overhaul to mm -hmm. use Delron's the way to go. It doesn't take any moisture. Okay. Uh, the, the paper shims a lot of times will get water on them and they kind of, they lose their shape. Oh, which is never yeah. good for your half a thousand sort of inch padding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we also have leather pads. That's the, the, the last but not least. Um, some of the um, Yamaha base, or a lot of the Yamaha base flutes use leather pads. Wow. And it's the same thing. It's just that they're a little more forgiving. They're also, it's a darker sound. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of experience with doing them myself. I actually had a client that wants me to put some in um, an Altus flute, and I can't find leather pads. I'm still looking for the mm -hmm. right leather pads. So, you know, as you can see, there's a huge assortment of different styles of pads. Uh, what are you putting? Are you putting glue? Is it all glue? Or well, what? so what we do, it, depending on, on the type of pad, um, there's different, what's called a stabilizer. So mm -hmm. they have plastic or Delron stabilizers. Oh, yeah. And then they have this kind of uh, rubbery. Did flute makers make this Delron material, or is this something that someone else in a science lab made? No, I think it was f really from flute makers. Um, uh, you know, Straubinger, I mean, Straubinger worked for Brandon Brothers. Okay. okay. And Brandon Brothers, I think, was really the first to kind of get on this bandwagon, and I think Straubinger kind of took it to the next level. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely comes from flute flute geniuses. Okay, wow. So so what we'll do on the straps is I'll I'll super glue in a stabilizer to the bottom of the cup. Mm -hmm. Then we put in a shim Delron shims. So they come in. This is two thousandths of an inch. Okay. So they go from half a thousand to uh, legit. yeah half a thousand to seven point five thousand. That's a seven point five thousand shim. So like I said, on certain flutes that are that are really perfect, you know, I can you're gonna be really in the zone if you put about fifteen between thirteen to sixteen thousandths across mm -hmm. the board, should be really close. And then what we do is we call it partial shimming. So I look at it as a uh, a quadrant from twelve, you know, twelve, three, six, and yeah, nine. Yeah. So then I, I look at that, so there might be a half a thousandth in the back, it's a twelve o'clock or this and that's really where the science comes in of being a pattern to mm -hmm. really be able to dial in and see where the things are half a thousand. And what we do is I use a a stick with a piece of cigarette paper on I've it. I've seen this. Yes. Yeah. So if, if I can hold your flute, yeah. um, I put it, you know, I take the cigarette paper, I put it under the key, and I pull it, and I feel how the drag feels under my fingers. Yeah. And, um, you know, by doing that, I can just, just feeling how it, the tug. Mm -hmm. And, um, That's so simple. You it's know? so simple. Yeah. And it's so, it's so accurate. Um, another thing, I'm a saxophone player as well as a flute player, so I have a lot of sax uh, Broadway guys and saxophone players that come through here, and sometimes people can twist my arm enough to like work on their saxophones or their clarinets, which I generally do not like to do. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, a lot of the saxophone repairmen will put a leak light through their horns. Okay. And you can take a leak light, put it through a saxophone, and close the keys, and you won't see any light come out. But if I use my feeler gauge, I can feel leaks all over the place. So uh -huh, you actually yeah. see, you can't see under a half a thousand yeah. inch. And um, I use cigarette paper. Sometimes I use um, uh, like a, a tape kind of, okay. which is a half a thousand inch. Yeah. But I kind of like the feeling of the, of the uh, paper. Um, 
So that's how we, we kind of wow. dial into where the leaks are. Yeah. Yes. I did that. Yeah. And then there's also different techniques of, um, I, I did a, um, I have a Facebook group called the Flute Forum. Yeah, yeah. If you're I'm not uh, a member, please come, come on down. Mm -hmm. And um, I just did a video about um, another way of padding that we do, what I learned from Jeffrey Weissman, um, is shimming piccolo. So I do the same thing we do in the flutes, where you take a paper and you put it in and you use um, pad cement okay. as opposed to just floating them in with glue, which, yeah. which most of the companies do. And <laughs> I found that the shimming works a little better, it takes longer, um, but it it's really covers great. If you have a, a pad that's floated in on, a, on some glue and there's a leak in the front and the back, I call yeah. that opposite hard spots or opposite okay. soft spots, okay. you can never really float a pad yeah. into the front and the it back. It would balance, it never, yeah. It's never perfect. So there's a lot of different ways about going to padding. You know, there's reasons the results and the reasons don't matter. Oh, yeah. The results <laughs> matter. So um, you can go about it a million different ways, yeah. but to get your flute to cover correctly, is that's when you're feeling really good. A lot of times I have people come through our, my shop and they say, I thought it was me, not my flute. I hear that like all the time. I thought it was me, not my flute. And a lot of the time, it's your flute. Yeah. And um, even like a head joint cork is so important. Like people don't understand how important it is. And a lot of times people get spoiled, I think, to some degree with these really great high engineered flutes mm -hmm. that play really well. You could go over a year without doing a COA, mm -hmm. but I don't suggest it because what happens is the, the mechanism gets dried out, your head joint cork gets moisture on it, oh, yeah. and it screws everything up. Mm -hmm. Even just taking a head joint cork out, putting a new head joint cork will change the articulation of the flute. Yeah. It changes the response of the flute. So um, that's important, you know. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention about the pads too is the, you know, I think one of the the main, another real great thing about strawberry pads is that seeing that they're so flat and hard, mm -hmm. they're a little more reflective which makes them project a little more. Mm -hmm. It makes them a little bit brighter, but it, it makes it louder and mm -hmm. easier to play. If you play a, a new flute as opposed to a, an old Haynes or Powell, mm -hmm. you're gonna notice that those flutes don't aren't digital note to note mm -hmm. as quite as much. You kind of have to work a little harder for them. That, yeah. yeah, sure. And that has to do with these advances in technology and padding, you mm -hmm. know? So I hope that answers a, a lot of your questions here. I think that was pretty great. Good, good. Well, thank you for talking with us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Now, where is your studio here? It's on... I'm on I'm 164 West 25th Street yeah. in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, I'm in Monday through Saturday, 11 to 4.30 for walk-in hours. I, people send me their flutes from all over the world. So you can send me your flute and we'll uh, turn it around pretty quickly for yeah. you. So, worked for me. Yes, I did. I did some work for Rachel. I yeah. did some work for Andrea, mm -hmm. Robert. Yeah. Um, lots of flute news. Lots of flute news. Yes. Yeah. Being in Manhattan, I got.